Okay, I want to do an English version. I've done the Spanish version about uh, polypropylene fiber. And uh, I want to explain to you when to use it and why to use it. So it basically is like an accordion. It opens up and it's got all these little 90 degree angle fibers that are connected to each other. And I'll tell you the process. So you, you put your water in your mixer or your, your, your cement mixer. You mix all your components. So you have your sand, your cement, your water, whatever other, whatever other chemicals you put in there. You add this to the end, near the end. Because if you, if you put it in with the water, for example, this gets chewed up too much. It gets distributed too much and damaged as well. You want the fibers to sort of remain as an accordion, not as single fibers. So put it at the end, you'll get much better results. Okay, so um, if you use uh, fiberglass fibers, the your cement will actually eat away at it very quickly and uh, it will lose all its strength. The alkalinity in the cement and other chemicals will destroy the, uh, the uh, fiberglass. So it's really crucial to use polypropylene. There's many companies that sell this. Buy a nice brand because I've noticed that a lot of the uh, brands that are really cheap, I don't think it's polypropylene. It has a very different feel to it. Polypropylene is very plastic light. It's not, not fabric like. So if it's plastic-like, you probably have the right thing. If it's very fiber-like, it's, it's, it's not likely the right product. So um, I'll make a list of all the things that are beneficial um, as a list so you can see that. Uh, I'm going to get into some of the details now. So let's say you're casting thin objects, okay? So let's say you're casting an art piece or a... Um, a countertop, whatever it may be. So this is the advantage of it. Even though this is broken, it doesn't fall apart. It's still there. So I'm going to break this off. And if you look closely, you can see the fibers everywhere. Now when you're making a countertop, for example, and you want to polish it, you have to be very careful in the uh, quantity of polypropylene fibers you use. Don't use too much. Use just enough that you can get a really good disbursement. But when you go to polish it, it's, there's nothing more annoying than having these fibers on the surface. And when you polish it, you have like a line there and you've got to fill it in with some cement afterwards. So it's really important not to overload. Um, cement that you want to polish or, or clean up afterwards, even the edges if you have lots of fiber last there. And the next secret to that is also you can take a torch. The torch does quick work of this uh, plastic material. It'll burn all the hairs off and when you burn it off it, it basically becomes very clean. The fiber actually burns into the cement so it's actually burning enough that the fiber will go disappear quite deep into the cement so it doesn't become an issue afterwards. Um, the other scenario is that what are the benefits in terms of the strength? So these companies call this secondary reinforcement. They don't call it primary reinforcement, they call it secondary reinforcement. And what do they mean by that? So what they're, what they're saying is that your typical rebar is your primary reinforcement. And the polypropylene fibers are the secondary reinforcement. So they want you to team the two of them together. They want you to, to use rebar and polypropylene fiber as a team. Because they both do different things. So the rebar in the cement will give it rigidity right from the get-go and the polypropylene fibers will prevent the little little cracks and, and, and damages that happen 
on uh, a cement pad. So if you add this into your, your mix, the uh, cement companies will throw this whole bag into the mixer, into the big truck, and this probably is enough for the whole you know, truck load. I haven't read the, the specifications, but if you throw this into the truck, the bag disintegrates and the fiber will disperse really nicely into the cement. So secondary reinforcement is the main purpose of this. So let's say you are actually doing art pieces. So you'll have an art piece like this and um, it's loaded with fiber. And as I showed before, it just, you can't rip it apart right away. Like if this didn't have any fiber, you could probably get it apart, but I can't get this apart. There's no way. And there's not too much fiber in there. There's just enough. So that really shows you the benefit of uh, this fiber in a mix. It makes it more stable, yes, but it also prevents these oddities where let's say you make a countertop, this edge doesn't break off so easy. Or somebody puts a coffee mug on the corner, it doesn't break off because there's fiber in it. And the idea really is to make the cement a lot more bulletproof. There's, uh, you know, so many people making concrete countertops and things like that that are thinner. And this allows you to go thinner, which is really cool. If you can actually make uh, a chair or a tabletop and you can go down to one inch or half an inch by loading up your cement with this to a certain extent. And... Uh, so it's a great product. Try it out. Don't be shy on, on this. Um, I'll give you the pricing on it. This here in Ecuador, it's uh, 0 0.6 kilograms and it's $12. It used to be $10, now it's $12. It's hard to find, by the way. But um, adding this material will make a big difference. One last thing and that's really important is the fiber length. So this here is three quarter inch, uh, probably 1.75 centimeters. So if you have um, really tiny fibers, it has a different purpose. If you have this fiber, it's really good for general cement work, uh, copings, uh, stairs, steps, artwork, concrete tables, Whatever it may be, this really is a, a, a workhorse for almost everything. It's a good, good measurement, three-quarter inch. So next time you see a bag of polypropylene fiber, grab it, put it in your mix, and see how you like it. So this is just a, an encouragement to try it out because it is a great product.